just like I promised, here I am. Next day, too. Not bad going, huh? Anywho, today we're going to be doing the Hainanese chicken and rice. This is a recipe that's much loved in Singapore, so shout out to my buddy in Singapore, Nettie, in case you're watching, and shout out to Ray Ray. Girlfriend, you need to pay attention to this recipe because it's much like the chicken and rice that you've been served in Thai restaurants. My sauce is going to be a bit different. This is basically a recipe that's healthy. It's delicious. It's not all that hard to prepare. It's versatile. It's everybody friendly, I think. And uh, I think it's going to be pretty simple for you guys to do. Okay, let me show you what we're gonna be working with. This is everything that you're gonna need. Ooh, except for, I think, sesame seeds, but we'll talk about that later. Anyway, I'm just using some cheapo vinegar. This is for the soaking process of our chicken. Um, this is just malt vinegar. It's like 69p a bottle. All you're gonna need is like apple, apple cider vinegar, like where we come from, you know, in the States. Buy you a cheap bottle of that or um, the malt vinegar here in England or something like that. And I'll tell you why we're gonna use it. And for the soaking process, I also use just table salt. And this is just a cheap table salt. For dipping sauce later on, toasted sesame oil. This stuff is very versatile, very delicious. And if you're gonna be cooking with me, in the future, you're going to want to keep this in your cabinets like I do because I love it. Kikamon. This is, uh, to me, at the table for sauces and for sprinkling is non-substitutable. Uh, it's the best table soy that I, you know, like to use. Um, I'm sure there are mixes and stuff out there that other people might like, but for just, you know, mixing together for sauces and for using to sprinkle over rice, say when we're having chicken and rice, we also use a lot of fish sauce, but that's going into my dipping sauce today. We've got a package of trimmed salad onions, scallions. They're not substitutable. I mean, these are absolutely delicious. I'm gonna show you how to prep them and how to get them ready and they're going to be used in the uh, soup aspect of the Hainanese chicken. And of course you see this fat girl here. This is the biggest chicken I could buy. They're all about the same size, but don't get those crappy little chickens that say, you know, we're all prepared and ready to go in the oven for you. Yeah. Um, just get you a good size chicken. I think this one cost us about six pound six pound fifty or something uh, and she weighs a good bit I can't remember what the weight is I don't understand the things here what would you say she is Paul as far as weight goes she's pretty hefty so get a good sized chicken you know because you're gonna want to feed the, this will feed up to four people this first time and like I told you before we're gonna have leftovers and we're gonna put that into our fried rice, so it's gonna feed those four people again tomorrow. We're gonna have a thumb of ginger, about as big as your thumb, a bit wider, but you know, when you buy ginger in a pack in the store, it usually comes with two or three pieces about that size. And today I have just one medium to large-ish size clove of garlic. Those are gonna be components of a couple of things, but mostly for my dipping sauce. And I'm also throwing in a stalk of lemongrass. You can find these in any uh, Asian or Oriental grocery. You can find them in most grocery stores. This adds a uh, delicious layer of flavor to your flavor to your stock. Um, it's one of those things where people will be like, "Ooh, it tastes so good," but they don't know what it is. They'll be like, "Oh, what is this that you've used that makes it taste so good?" So keep it your secret. I am putting an onion, a small yellow, white, whatever you want to call it, onion into my stock to add flavor to the stock. The stock that's going to be the basis of what we cook our rice in and also this little soup that we have on the side. You want your big fat 
fresh juicy cucumber this is a big old English cucumber isn't it beautiful I love the cucumbers here in England they're so long and anyway you know, gonna if if you're in America and all you got some diddly little sad cucumbers, get a couple of them because it's really refreshing to have bites of slices of juicy cold cucumber with your bites of salty rice and chicken and sips of broth. The taste and texture is one other thing I notice about Oriental cuisine. Thai and Vietnamese and ones, but all of them, Chinese, Japanese, is texture is extremely important. And some textures that we would find strange, they find delightful, like gelatinous textures or tendinous textures. And the texture combination between cold and warm, which you're gonna see me do a lot in my dishes, is really beautiful. Like in the future, I'll teach you how to make grilled salads with a Thai style dressing and the combination of the juicy, um, soft, succulent meat and say mushrooms combined with crunchy, cold uh, salad components. It's really sensational in your mouth. It explodes with all these flavors. We will be using fish sauce. This is going to flavor our stock. It's quintessential. It is to me, the queen of all seasonings. I love fish sauce. It goes in everything that I make, even my scrambled eggs. I'm gonna mash everything up in a mortar and pestle for my sauce, my dipping sauce, but, and I've got about three or four of these Jessies. I love mortars and pestles. I'll show you sometime the three different ones that I have at the moment. I used to have an olive wood one. I don't know where it went. I think it went south when Hunter threw a big bag of my kitchen stuff into a skip by accident, but we won't go there. Okay, and we're doing enough servings of rice today, y'all, for eight. But there's a reason for that. And I know from experience that these little boxes, and they say 500 grams each. Um, this is Thai jasmine rice that I got from the co-op. And it's great because you know that one box, you can know that one box has four servings in it, uh, according to my rice cooker anyways. I measure all my rice by my rice cooking cup. And I always cook my rice in my rice cooker because it's flawless and it's dummy proof. Therefore, it is good for me. So I'm doing eight servings, four for today, four for next time. And those other four servings, they're going to be allowed to cool down to room temperature. Then they're going to be refrigerated, and you'll find out why tomorrow. I think that's a bit it right now for the ingredients we're going to be working with today. So let's get started showing you how to prepare the chicken for boiling. Okay, now you see me prepping the chicken before it's going to be soaked for a while. Uh, you don't have to go through this process. It's not totally necessary, but I like to do it for us because, well, A, it cuts back on the fat and grease that's going to be in there. And you see me using paper towels when you're having a hard time pulling that, uh, pulling them leggings off that chicken, grab it with a paper towel. It makes it much easier to pull off. And I'm just going to get as much skin off as I can. And I pretty much can't do it with the wings and I just leave the skin on there. Now, a lot of Hainanese people wouldn't do that. They'd leave the, the skin on, but for kids, because I'm gonna debone the chicken, we want to. You see me rinsing the chicken really well here, as you do with all of your meat, all your meat when it comes in the package before you cook it or do anything with it you need to give it a good rinse and there she is all naked in pink the whole alien for your viewing pleasure yum i'm washing my hands and being a good girl as you can see and also washing my sink out whenever any raw meat's been in that thing wash it out with hot water and soap now i'm preparing her for a soak now this is my malt vinegar bottle which is nearly empty and I'm having a very difficult time with it. You're going to put want to put, well, any vinegar you have to hand, the cheaper the better. You just want the acidic quality of the vinegar. It has a cleansing property to it. 
It just purifies the meat, gets impurities out of it. Uh, and I say I probably put about four tablespoons of vinegar in there all together. And that's just malt vinegar there, cheapest chips. If you're in the States, you might want to use apple cider vinegar. Now you see me working with just cheap old cooking salt, and I'm going to put a lot in there. Don't worry, it's going to get rinsed away. The salt is also a facilitator for getting impurities out of the chicken. My mother used to soak her chicken in milk. Well, I don't have enough money for a gallon of milk to soak my chicken in, so I just give it a vinegar and salt bath. I've gone to the sink. I'm filling it with very cold water because, well, that's the way it is coming out now. <laughs> it hurts. And we're going to leave her there, ideally for about an hour. And you'll see the water go a uh, bit pink, probably. It does get some of the excess blood out if there's any there. But mostly it's impurities that we're going to be getting out. It just makes for a better finished product and also a much more beautiful broth. The presentation of the broth is up to you, but, um, well, the presentation of the broth, if you're looking to be authentic, is important. You want a golden broth that's clear and sparkly. Here I am with my cucumber. This is me prepping ahead of time. I like to do that. And I'm going to peel the cucumber. If you want to leave that peel on, feel free. I think the peel's waxy and I don't want any like chemicals that might be in there. I would scrub it, but just generally agrees with old farts like me and Paul better if I take the skin away. We don't tend to get as much indigestion or heartburn when we eat it. And I love, love cucumber. It's a terrific accompaniment to this dish. I wouldn't make this dish without it, if that gives you any idea how much I love it. And we talked about the textural difference between the juicy, hot meat and the, the rice, which is chewy and fluffy and delicious. Oh dear, that's, that's scary. That's disturbing. Okay, anyways, um, yeah, just peel the whole damn thing. This is for four people. I'm going to eat about 85% of this cucumber. Hey, it's not my choice. It's just the how I roll. Everybody else takes a few. I take about 53 slices. I'm slicing it kind of thin here. See how I'm placing my forefinger? That's gauging my thickness. Luckily, I haven't dislodged any members or digits yet. So, hey, go me. Now I'm piling them onto a little bowl. Look at my ass balancing shit. Wow. Well done, Dingleberry. Okay, now we're working with our scallions. Our scallions have been cleaned earlier. You want to rinse them and you want to get any loose bits off and cut those ends off. When you've done that, and I mean even if they've been trimmed and washed in quotes, you're going to want to rinse them and trim them yourself again anyway. And I'm holding them together, luckily not again losing any digits, and cutting them pretty thinly. These are going to go into our broth. How do they taste? Freaking fantastic. And I'm just going to put them in a little bowl. And the cuke and the scallions go into the fridge for later. Now this is me doing my dipping sauce. This dipping sauce is the shiz. You need it in your life. You want it. Well, I know I want it. I could snort that stuff through my nostrils. But anyway, I'm taking a thumb-sized piece of ginger here. What was my tongue coming out for? goober concentration man so i peeled it i'm taking a bit out there just got some peel i couldn't reach now these four slices or so that i'm doing they are for my broth okay i'm gonna put them into the broth that i'm going to be making my stock in this other little bit of ginger is going into my mortar and pestle to make my dipping sauce for, well, drizzling over the rice, really. But it's a good multi-purpose sauce, I think. Now, this is one big fat clove of garlic. Garlic is always in our house, like I told you before. We stink, Squidward. 
Okay, so that's going in there and I've just cut them into pretty big chunks because I'm going to grind them up. See me putting salt into the mortar and pestle? The salt's grains help the facilitation of the breaking down of the garlic and ginger into a paste-like consistency. As you see me going to town, there you go, beating the living shit out of the boss that used to treat you bad. Just pound away at it. <sighs> pound. Okay, now... we. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's honey. You don't have to use expensive honey. I'm just using plain old what they call runny honey here, clear honey. Yes, you see me using my finger. My hands are clean. Don't worry. I haven't had them up my nostrils or anything. And we're using about a heaping tablespoon of delicious honey in there. Yes, I like honey. Sesame oil. It is one of the lights of my life and one of the gods of seasoning. I'm putting in a generous amount here. When I say generous, I mean probably about four big tablespoons. You want enough dip for everybody to go batshit with that stuff. Kikamon, my favorite table soy sauce and also my favorite for sauces and dips. About four tablespoons of that going in as well nearly equal to the sesame oil now this is something that i did mention earlier oh it's the sesame seeds i did mention them two little spoonfuls of though i was gonna say that probably about a uh, half a table i mean half a tea no about a teaspoon a small teaspoon and this right here you're seeing is a japanese seasoning called togarashi look it up get it love it i love it it's got black and white sesame seeds in it it's got, you know, small bits of chili and it gives a little bit of kick and a whole lot of flavor and I just, I'm crazy about it. Now here you see me pouring in some boiled water. That's probably about two tablespoons. Now why I did this is to thin the sauce out a little bit, but it also helps me to melt that honey so that I have a smooth, lovely sauce and I'm going to work it baby. I'm going to work that stuff together. Stir it well. Make sure you get all the bits up from the bottom. I'm kind of almost whisking it there I guess. Mm -mm. I could just pour that all over Paul and okay well anyway this is going to go into the fridge and it isn't going to matter if it sits in there all damn day while you're doing other things. The flavors will have time to marry and they're going to taste great. Oh my. Okay. Now, after the soaking time, about an hour has gone past. We're going to pour all that cloudy yucko water out of the chicken. We're going to bring her out all in her glorious pink alien nakedness and we're giving her a good rinse we're going to want to do that because we want to rinse her off again to make sure she's super clean and we're going to want to get excess salt off because you know how people are about salt and you should watch your salt intake but not to the extent unless you have high blood pressure where you can't enjoy your food anymore but anyways that's just my humble <clears throat> breast side up going in the pan and we're going to fill that baby up nearly with cold water this is the basis for our future stock <laughs> i don't know why i do these faces there's something wrong with me okay this is a small white slash yellow what the hell of a brown onion just a small regular onion <laughs> i'm derping as usual Derping like derping. And we're just putting, taking the outer layer off because we don't want any, you know, impurities from that getting in there and taking the other side off. And then I'm just going to like cut it into quarters or big chunks and I'm going to pop it in there. And, you know, later on you can fish them out of your stock, but this adds a lot of flavor to your stock. And the flavor of your stock is uber important. Knowing how to make a flavorful stock. I can't tell you how important it is in the kitchen in any cuisine across the board from Italian to American to whatever 
stock. Now this is a stalk of lemongrass. Lemongrass has a ton of flavor. I put out, I took off the little outer jacket, just one layer. I've cut the ends off and now you see me just whacking the crap out of that shit with the side of the knife. Pop, there it goes in. Now I'm taking more salt. Yes, it needs it. It's extremely bland. Uh, and you'll find if you taste it later, if you didn't salt it, it is very, it's going to be bland. It just helps wake up the flavors. It helps make a great stock. Now she's all salted and gingered and lemongrassed and onioned up. There's the buccaneer coming in to save the day. Carrying that heavy pan over to the stove for me. And we're going to put her on high. When we get her to a boil, when you start seeing some serious action going on in there, I want you to turn her down to a simmer and cover her up and keep her in there for 30 minutes and then turn her off and let her sit for one hour. Now this is eight servings of jasmine rice. If you get rice, one thing you may not know about it that I've learned from my Oriental friends is you need to rinse it about four or five times for that many servings. Now we're going into, we put the rice in to soak and in water to cover. Now you see me with the chicken uh, post boiling and watch that bone just slide out. Look around on your chicken and you will find treasures that you wouldn't believe. Don't diss any piece of meat. Just, you know, get it, chuck away the bones, chuck away gristle and tendons or anything like that. But if you've let that chicken sit in there for an hour after you let it simmer for 30 minutes, I don't know how it does it, but it's magical. It makes it so tender. It makes it super easy to debone. And as you can see, I don't have to fool with the skin, which kind of helps out. Now for this chicken, if you wanted to leave it on the bone, you could, but like I said, my kids and bones don't mix, so no. Now you see me taking the chicken, I'm pulling it into little bite-sized pieces, you know, stringing it, whatever you want to call it, pulling it into strings. And I'm going to do two different bowls, y'all. I'm going to do one bowl with the leg and thigh meat and one bowl with the breast and wing meat. The dark meat is going to be used the next time that I cook when I make the Thai fried rice. The reason for that is dark meat has a stronger, gamier taste, and I just like the clean, fresh, nice taste of the white meat. It's a pure taste, and it tastes best to us with the rice and the broth, and best to the kids. Now you see me showing you something important here. Do you see this inner part of this breast? On the very inner part of the breast, you'll see a, a, a fillet. It's like the tenderloin almost of the breast. Reach underneath that and kind of roll. And do you see that membrane? Take that away. I don't know if y'all know about that, but it ain't nice. And you don't want it on there. The meat that's underneath it tucked away in there, some of the finest meat on the bird. But just be careful of the membrane. Look at how much is left of the middle part of the bird. I'm southern. I don't fucking mess around. I'm, well, I'm a vulture. And there's the dark meat on our right and the white on our left. Now you see me with my rice. That's been soaking for about an hour. You could let it soak for several. The reason we do this is because it makes a better textured rice when it's finished cooking and it makes your cooking time quicker. Now, you've covered it with water, you've let it soak. Pour that water out. Don't disturb the rice, but you just see me pouring it and the rice is kind of just sitting there. And then I stop. There's still a bit of water left in there, but not a whole lot. And then you're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that gorgeous stock you've made and remember to pull your lemongrass out and fish your little bits of onion out if you don't want them around. They're not going to hurt you, but, you know, for presentation's sake, you might want to pull them out with a slotted spoon or something or strain it if you like. Now I'm ladling my stock in to the rice, and this is going to do some magical shiz with that rice. If you've never cooked your rice, and I'm not talking about throwing a stock cube in there, that's cool, that's fine if that's what you're doing and you don't have a lot of time, but if you've never had rice cooked in proper chicken broth that you made yourself, you ain't 
lived. So you got to try that out. Now, since I've got eight servings in there, I'm filling it up to the eight mark line, putting it in the cooker, closing the lid because we want it to work, and turning it on. Yay! I'm so smart. <laughs> now, you see that left in there? That is something else that we're going to need. We waste nothing in this dish. That right there, I'm going to add some non pla to, some fish sauce. And the fish sauce, don't be scared of fish sauce, okay? It may taste strong if you put it on your fingertip, though I like it like that. <laughs> it may smell a bit strong to you, and that's my favorite brand, by the way, Squid. I don't know why the hell they call it squid. There's no squid in it, but hey, there you go. And we're going to put in some generous shakes. You just do it to taste, but it needs it. It adds body. It adds umami. It adds deliciousness to that stock. It's going to bring the stock from bam to kapow and make it really delicious. Oh, dear. That's really... Well, there's your finished product. Rice chicken broth cucumbers dipping sauce ladle some of that soup over your rice and love and sparkles and i love you very much and god i got a silly smile but i do love you all mm -hmm.